going on everybody this is Jacob Varro uh, with my single tenant subwoofer box fourth order build today I'm going to be doing some tests and just some things that cardio people would never consider or think about it's going to seem stupid as well as really like just dummy proof things that things that nobody really thinks about as well as how these things are going to affect your output of your enclosure so use this concept in your own build to recognize how you can block certain airflow as well as um, pressure to direct it in a certain direction and think of that concept when it comes to output so if there's something that you would like to do with your sound waves this is tricks that you could put into your own concept whether you have a trunk build you have a fourth order or sixth order your wall build c pillar b pillar anything even your doors etc so this is something that you can look into and you can utilize this with different types of uh, material but i'm just going to be using some extra scrap wood that i have for my build so i have all of this some two by sixes two by eights two by fours pieces of birch three quarters stuff like this that i have just scrap left over that i'm going to be using for this test so stay tuned throughout this video so before i start i'm going to go ahead and do a sweep to find out what my peak is and my frequency of it is before i do anything else uh, just so you guys know anybody new watching that my system is not the prettiest but it works and i like to um do tests and trials to see if i can improve output and audio so that's part of my little project with my little single tenant subwoofer and uh, for all the viewers that always are wondering, why don't you go with two tens, Jacob, or go with a 15, etc. So I'm not worried about upgrading. I'm not worried about getting as loud as possible with getting more, you know, subwoofers added to the enclosure or anything like that. I'm not happy. This is just a project. Um, I could easily put 418s back there or 215s, etc. But this is just projects that I'm working on on the side just for fun to learn things with a small system to keep my base head life down right now without having a lot of money inside of it involved. All right, so volume 20, turn my meter on. And what I'm gonna do, of course my dash is gone, it's not pretty, but remember guys, don't worry about my looks when it comes to my enclosure and all the concepts, what's there. So what I'm gonna first do is find out exactly where I'm at right now meter wise. This is a SSA studio app on a meter. I'm about to do a 40 to 70 hertz sweep. Find out what my peak is, sealed, and then we'll work from there. So here we go. This is going to be crazy, but I'm telling you guys, this is going to be different output. You'll see. All right, so that's gonna be our starting number, 119.29. So that's what I can work with. Of course, there's a little bit of pressure difference. It varies depending on how the temperature is outside and all of that, but that's a good ballpark number to work with right now. So 119.3 dBs. So what I'm about to do now is go back and show you what I'm gonna do with this wood. So remember, this is just fun and a project trial. Nobody normally would do stuff like this. So imagine doing this in your own build too with some scrap pieces of wood. So what I'm going to do first is, so I have it all kind of braced a little bit, but what I'm about to do is block airflow with some pieces of wood back here. Guys, you can laugh if you want, but I'm telling you, I'm just going to show you the result difference by doing this. And think of this as a concept of how output changes depending on you know, a couple of variables. So I'm going to start off with kind of blocking it off all the way down and we'll go from there. So I would never keep this here, but just for fun on video, I'm going to share this stuff with you for fun. So what I did was get some pieces of wood. There we go. A couple extra pieces I got. And all I'm doing is kind of blocking it off. I mean, uh, it'll work with what I have. So now I'm gonna see how my output changed differently. Literally by doing this. I'm telling you, this is stupid, but I'm just having fun with the system. And that's what you guys gotta get with this with car audio. Just try things in your vehicle. Try things with your system, you never know. Try with one seat down, one seat up. Move your seats up and back. Move your box two inches back or forward. If you're a wall build, try adjusting your seat that's blocking the port. Um, you can also take a seat out and see how it things change. You can also add pieces of wood to your loading wall. Thicken your loading wall thickness. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to see how audio output changes. All right, so I did all of that just to see what happens next. 
I'm curious. I've never done this. This is all not staged. It's all unplanned fun. So we're about to find out how it changes just by putting some wood in there. Watch this. It's not screwed down either. It's just for fun. See that guys? So remember the number before to now. This is very important for audio world. Whether you're a competitor with SPL or you're just a daily driver that likes music. This right here, this concept I just explained for all systems makes sense. So how I affected my, my um, pressure containment affected my SPL score. So what do I mean by that? I went from 119.3 all the way to 117.45. So I literally dropped almost two Two full dBs just by adding this wood in here. Jacob, that would be stupid. Why would you do that? Well, you'd be surprised. The length or width of how my port, my box is from the back of the hatch up affects output, but also what's around you affects output. So think about this in a wall builder concept in a, in a um, trunk building, especially. So you have a lot of infrastructure and cabin space that you could, util you could utilize or alter with your box. So... I had a couple pieces of wood I just put in there, and I was curious if, if I was to block off how my pressure containment goes up and over, how does it differ when I block that off? So now what I'm going to do is adjust my loading wall just by putting a couple baffles stacked in there and see how that changes as well. So this is just concept that I'm trial and error having fun on camera for you guys to see. Hey, this is the kind of things that, you know, you can think about in your system is, hey, what if I increased my thickness of my baffle or I added an additional brace? Or what if I blocked off this area of my box? You know, there's things that I can consider to see how output changes. What if I didn't block off the port area, but I blocked off the rest of it? What if I went up because of the containment wasn't here, it was over here? Or if I blocked off half of it and I allowed my pressure to flow a certain way? What if you built a whole tunnel tube to a certain area? So you kind of contain pressure to a certain point. You can kind of direct your sound waves to a certain area. So this is the science of car audio that a lot of people don't really consider. There's a science to it with how um, pressure containment works where you can go to a whole new level of getting louder with what you have just by adjustments and this is where SPO goes into play but you don't have to be an SPO addict to do this anyway all right let's get to it let me talk less so what I'm gonna do now is with what I got I'm just gonna put a couple pieces of wood in here if it blocks the port it's too long all right so that's too long I just want to put a couple pieces of wood in here and see how my output changes with thickness. I mean, this is really, really funny, weird, but hey, I don't care. I'm having fun. All right. Add a couple pieces of wood in there just to see how it changes on output. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a couple more tests after this, too. I don't know if it'll shut. We'll see. Yep. So it shut. So all I did was just have some wood in here in the back to interfere. Let me get a couple more pieces. And what I'm trying to do is just kind of see, hey, if I put something behind this that removes some of the pressure, does that space contain some of that base output? So just get a couple more pieces in there in the back, and then I'm going to go see how it does. I'm sure I'm going to lose, but the concept's there. You'd be surprised. Some people actually do get louder by doing stuff, doing stuff like this over time. All right, so that's enough of the silliness for this one. And of course, I'm gonna go in and do some other tweaks after. So I got a couple pieces of wood back there. It's not for bracing or anything. It's just for kind of like taking up space. So the same thing with this. Oh, I forgot to shut my door. The same concept with this you can do with box space. So if you add some blocks of wood into your your box to see if you lose or gain literally just toss some wood in there and oh, bark <laughs> dog but um you can just toss some pieces of wood in your box or even screw them down or put 45s and see how the output changes on your enclosure tuning wise because like even that frequency drop i lost almost two dbs but i did drop my peak my peak went down a whole frequency so just by blocking off some of the pressure all right we'll find out real quick Again, I'm sure I'm gonna lose, but hey, this is just for fun so you guys can see how much output affects it. All 
right, so see how much of a difference it was? I was from 117s to 119s, literally by just how that wood was sitting in there. So 19.4, so I actually went up. See that? I went up um, a little over a tenth of a dB just by some wood sitting there in the back wall, loading wall. So that kind of could give you a, me a concept to say, you know what? If I put some of that wood back there, maybe I add to my baffle and then see if I gain by adding to my baffle. I'm not going to probably do that, but for the video, you guys get it. So now let me go back, do my last test for this one. test for this video. All the wood fell out. I could hear the wood rattle too, but that was okay. So now I got all this put up. All right, there we go. Let me know what y'all think. Give me some suggestions or feedback. So I won't need all of it. Let me put some of this up. But what I'm about to do is block off the side here. So I got a piece of wood here I'm gonna put in here. Just out of curiosity, what if I had a piece of wood like that? You see, goes up to the ceiling spot, seals it off. And yet, since I had an output change, why not? Let me set this down real quick. Just for fun, I'll keep that wood there, why not? All right, this is my last test with this. So we'll find out. If the, buck, the wood didn't move, it's still back there. Yep, so that's kind of blocking off that side of the port. And this concept is, how does it block sound waves differently so and then that's the video hope you guys learned something in this um if you didn't learn anything else just learn that atmospheric changes of pressure is adjusted by certain infrastructure or materials that kind of block on a science scheme all right let's go real quick See that? I literally lost three quarters of a dB by having that other piece of wood in there on the other side. My peak dropped as well. So that shows you that my peak drops because of the port length adjustment. It might not seem like it's part of your port, but I'm telling you that was part of the port length because of the way pressure works, it follows that line. So that kind of lengthened my port length. So 18.93, so I was peaking a frequency higher before and I lost a whole three quarters of a dB almost. And then, of course, 2 dB almost with that change. So, yep, I initially started at 19.29, did a couple of tests just for fun. Found out out of everything, adding some pieces of wood behind the loading wall baffle of my fourth order box, I gained a little bit. So maybe I could look into adding some more infrastructure to that. And that's the video, Jacob Vile out. Subscribe, like, comment, let me know what y'all think if you watch to the end. Later.